You're listening to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. Visit our website for free resources to aid you in your pursuit of self-liberation. Old Vanu publications, podcasts, guest articles, and much more. Go to vanupodcast.com. And now, your hosts, Shane and Jason. And welcome to the Vaughn New Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state in the servile society. I'm your host Shane, coming to you from the Free Republic of Pasnia. I've got the ninth installment of this Building a Second Realm re-release here on TVP. Uh, it's two episodes combined, Next Steps Action Items and Next Steps Redux, originally released on April 16th and April 22nd, 2018 respectively. In the first 50 or so minutes, we cover Smuggler and XYZ's conclusionary chapter, Next Steps, Action Items. Kyle and I had some issues with it and uh, decided to do a follow-up episode uh, after we released our Redux version of this chapter. Uh, That makes up the second hour of this conversation. Uh, A little forewarning, Kyle was a little ranty, if that's a word, but uh, that shouldn't really be anything new to uh, long-time listeners of this podcast. Um, as always, please check out uh, please check the show notes for links and resources. I'm not going to re- recount all this information again. Uh, check out our sponsor, Libertarian Attack Publications, LibertarianAttack.com. And lastly, the Free Republic of Pasnia. Go learn more about it, Pasnia.com. One more episode of the Building the Second Realm series to go on uh, hashtag Agora and uh, the conclusion. Uh, well, at least, uh, at least the re-release. Uh, there will be much more to say on this subject matter in the future, especially now that there's uh, some highly relevant uh, you know, personal uh, knowledge uh, on the subject with uh yeah all the cool stuff happening here at the homestead uh, so i'll leave it there for now uh thanks guys please enjoy this episode and until next time stay safe and stay liberated uh quote should you find the strategy attractive the question of where to go from here needs to be answered these are some hints on how to proceed now kyle last week uh, and i'll end quote there for a moment last week you mentioned that uh, when you were going through the blessings, it was the uh, blessings of technology or whatever it was. This is a, you mentioned that this was a book on strategy, not a book on tactics. So Correct. this is you know there these are some hints on how to proceed. So I think they knew exactly what they were doing, um, and I think that's something to keep in mind too with maybe some of your criticisms um, as we go forward. I'm sure the still valid, still there, but I'm just saying. Um, they didn't go into the tactics and flesh it out as they did for a lot of portions of the book because this is a book on strategy, not a book on tactics. So correct. Um, so yeah, some hints. So these aren't supposed to be exhaustive, you know, intensive, you know, suggestions. It's supposed to be hints on how to proceed. So correct, but it's the hints I'm having an issue with too. Okay. So, <laughs> yes, yes. I'm, I'm really look, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really trying to not be a dick here. I'm really. I want to help. I want to make this work. However. There are some things here that that I have issues with. And don't get me wrong, there's some good stuff here too, but I wish they went into more at least a tiny bit more detail. I mean, I know it's hints, but Jesus. Okay, anyway, right. please let's, get let's continue. It. Yeah, please. All right, so we'll we'll go through these uh one at a time, but let's, uh, obviously since there's 15 of them, you know, keep it uh, you know, keep it as brief as humanly possible. Uh, so number one, make it your goal to achieve liberty based on this strategy or a variation of it. Now that I don't really have a problem with. I mean, I, you 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 set a goal so I mean, yeah, that there, I don't see anything wrong with that one. You know, make a goal to be a van nomad. Make a make a goal to, uh, you know, set up a second realm with the people that you you know associate with. Maybe your uh, your your uh, your agorist uh, friends or something. Yeah, make it a goal. I don't see anything wrong with that. Do you, Kyle? No, this one this one I'm I'm perfectly good with. Um, in fact, you could even say that this building the second realm series here in LA way, we're basically doing number one, but just in a very public way. I mean that that I mean that enough, we're, yeah. this this very series is not just this episode but this very series is proof of doing number 1. So no that that's good. Okay, cool. So number 2, tell others that you are committed to being active for liberty. Now this one I I I don't have a major issue with. I think they just need to condense down who to tell who to tell, right? <laughs> like well, most folks in the state of survival society won't uh care. Uh, they'll think you're crazy. They'll, uh, you know, my dad, I, my dad, so my dad told me last weekend. He said, you know, this van nomad thing, it's crazy, Shane. It's crazy. Um, so I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it should be more 
I guess, uh, condensed down to, to, to who, who you actually tell. Now, like anarchists and libertarians and some libertarians and, and voluntarists and uh, agorists, like, you know, I might, uh, you know, tell them, but I'm not going to go out and expl- exclaim to the world that I'm going to, you know, build second realms, right? I don't think that's the best, that's the best <laughs> strategy. It seems kind of contrary to, uh, you know, I guess kind of, it's like a need-to-know basis, right? It's tradecraft. Uh, the yeah. anarchists and voluntari- voluntarists, the, the venuans, the people that I would want to associate with, I'm going to tell them so that, you know, maybe they'll, uh, you know, agree with it and, you know, you know, join me. Right. Uh, but yeah, I don't think, you know, just telling others generally speaking is, is the wisest idea. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of and the second realm in some, in some aspects. And that's interesting. You took more the security culture kind of critique of it. And see, I was totally not going to go there at all. And believe me, I wrote the book on security culture, right? Literally. Um, I'm glad you did because I don't have to. Okay. (laughs) My real issue with this isn't even the security culture angle, which you explained beautifully just then. My issue here is what does being at quote unquote, what is being active for liberty? That phrase. Oh, God, I should have known that. That's kind of like activist, right? (laughs) What the fuck does that – no, sir, excuse my French, ladies and gentlemen, but what does being active for liberty fucking mean? What the fuck does that mean? (laughs) No, seriously. No, this is what's pissing me off. It's not even the security – no, 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 no. It's not even that. Think about this for a minute. The political crusaders and the anti-libertarian libertarian party – yeah, they'll say they're active, for, they're, they're, active, they're active for liberty. Yeah. They use that exact phrase. I've heard this for years. Be, I'm active for liberty. Vote for me. I mean, seriously, that's what I associate it with. So what I'm saying is, is this. Um, what is an activist? What is activism? What does being active for liberty mean? Like, I don't fucking know. When I yeah, went to one a million of those different things <laughs> in that one article, which became a chapter in my book on security culture, I actually went into some considerable detail about this, because depending on how you define activism, activism and so forth, that can mean you become an enemy of the state and they send the blood, the, the more undercover blood after you and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's very interesting, because if activism activist as concepts. Methodologies, really. If that is limited to political crusading, then I want nothing to do with activism right. or being an activist of any kind. I could be an – I mean technically I'm an environmentalist, so does that mean I want to be a uh, an activist for the environment? I mean what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> I, mean, I, mean I mean shit. I don't have any fucking excuse, – excuse me, folks. I know I'm getting animated about this, but this has been under my skin for years, and I think I've only said it probably a few times publicly, and I'll do so again here tonight. Being active for liberty is probably one of the most Orwellian doublespeak bullshit phrases I have ever heard in my life, and I have heard quite a bit. Damn. It is <laughs> crap. It is political crusading under another label is what I personally have come to the conclusion about. And if anybody disagrees with me, feel free to email me at Kyle at uh, – TheLastBastille.com because that that's where I'm at. I mean if anybody knows a work – even a working definition I'll be happy with. I don't need something like off a website, but even just a working definition. What is activist? What is activism? What, what does being active for liberty mean? Or even for the environment or pick something. I mean even if it's just like, a, like, like, a, like, like an anti-war activist. Well, I know what being anti-war is, but obviously, but what's activist? I mean, you see what I'm getting at here. So anyway, I know we've got the other, you know, bunch of others to go down. It's just I wanted to draw attention to that because it is so, so vague. And I know the authors probably didn't mean political crusading because the rest of the book yeah, is like – I don't think so. Not, <laughs> the rest of the book is completely not that, okay? I think probably because what happened, if I had to make a reasonable guess here, is that they too, like me, have heard this horrible, evil, wicked shit from Nolan's bastard child called the Libertarian Party, which is what it is. Because even David Nolan doesn't like it. That's on record. Yeah. Okay. We've done episodes about it before. We don't need to go into that here. They have – the the authors of of the book on strategy regarding the second realm have heard this same bullshit – from people who try to make Nolan's bastard child um, function, and it just when they were just trying to, and my impression is they were trying to hurry up and get this book done, and they just kind of recalled it off the top of the head and just type real quick, type, 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 and get it done. And too many people do stuff like that. Hell, I've even done it on occasion. I know it's wrong, um, which is why I really try really hard not to do it because I'm actually con- I'm very sense. I'm not just conscious of it. I'm very sensitive towards it. So tell others you are committed to being active for liberty. Well. You're right, Shane, about 
tell who others who are the who is the who of the others because <laughs> that's kind of its own fucking problem you just mentioned and do you, my tell, the, do you is, tell the bludgies uh do, yeah right. who, who do you tell <laughs> well, right, right um you know do you tell everyone in the servile society i don't think so um but yeah there's the tell others you're right shane in addition being active for liberty what what are we talking about? Anyway, we've got a whole bunch of others to go down, but I just wanted to make a big, big stink about that because words mean things. Phrases in this case mean things, or at least they're supposed to because if they don't, people can twist and twi – this is what Orwell warned about. People can twist not just words but even phrases around to mean either – just about anything they subjectively want it to mean, or worse, to mean the complete opposite of what a phrase at one point historically actually meant. Kind of like the word liberal. What does liberal mean? You know, I mean, anyway, we need to continue on. I just wanted to make a big, big stink about that. You just People, just be careful, okay? Um, that's all I'm saying. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, number three, dedicate some of your time on a regular basis to spend working on the second realm. So I have two points to this one. I think it's a, I think it's a good one. So first off, even if this even if this takes the form of thinking, put, putting together a list, a budget plan, etc., uh, whatever it may be, even if it's just something you know more kind of mental, that's still I think important. Uh, I think about my, my van nomadism constantly, and I've you know come up with some solutions. You know by thinking, I've uh, you know I guess ran through scenarios in my head. You know it's it's it's, it's it helps. It's effective. Um, now obviously I, obviously there should be some concrete stuff too, but. Um, obviously it's, you got, you got to start somewhere, right? You got to get a plan. You got to, or you got, you got to, you got to get a goal. You got to, you know, put together a budget so you can live frugally. Then you have to, you know, make a plan to, you know, when are you going to be a van no matter, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, now this is also what we tell, uh, what we've told our Vani podcast listeners before, right, Kyle? That's, uh, you know, make, you know, spend some time every single day, uh, on Vani, you know, making yourself more invulnerable to coercion. Even if it's five, even if it's five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever it is. You know, dedicate some time so it becomes uh, – some time every day so it becomes a habit, right? Um, so I think this one's a great one. I don't have any issues with that with this, with, with this one at all. I do have one issue, but it's more, I guess, more a, a, a phrasing or writing issue. I think it's more redundant with number one. So, like, re do me a favor. Read number one again and then read number three and tell me if you can see a difference. Okay. Number one, make it your goal to achieve liberty based on the strategy or a variation of it. Number three, dedicate some of your time on a regular basis to spend working on the second realm. I don't know. So, so first one, you make it a goal to. Uh, so, I'm, I'm setting a goal to, to to you know join second realms to live in second realms. And then number three, well, how do I you know get to a second realm? How do I create a second realm? Um, that's more kind of like the the putting putting, putting together the plan for van nomadism. So, I think they're I think they're different. I think th number three builds off number one. I can see where I can see where you can where you, where you see that though. So what number three is just more specific, or where where are you going at here? That's that's how I see it. Yeah, you make it you 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 make it a goal. I'm, I'm making a goal to you know live in second realms more often, and then um, there's other things that go in. There's obviously got to be a plan, a budget, um, all those sorts of things. I think three is just a, you know building upon and making it more concrete. I guess, but at that point, wouldn't it make more sense to just kind of combine the combine, two and maybe yeah. separate? Oh, hold on, and let me. I'm just saying as as a writer, wouldn't it have made more sense to maybe combine the two? get rid of most of the verbiage, maybe add a word or two, and then maybe at most separate kind of the, the slightly different uh, ideas by like a semicolon and call it a day. I mean, I know, I, I don't mean to sound like I'm nitpicking, but let's see, make your goal to achieve liberty based on the strategy. Okay. Dedicate same time on a regular basis, spend working on the second or building the second round would be better. Um, that, that seems to me to mean the same thing. I mean, like make it your goal... I mean, unless the only other way of phrasing is, like, if you have decided, no, but they, see, that doesn't even make any sense because, sorry, I don't mean to sound like I'm second guessing myself here, here when we're doing this live or whatever, but it almost sounds like the first step is where the reader hasn't decided yet whether or not to make to to actually build the second realm, and then starting from either, uh, and then starting from like number three. It's like, oh, now they've decided. I, I don't know. There's some there's some assumptions going just even with these these. I don't know, man. I don't mean it's not like I'm nitpicking. It's just I think they 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 gave an impression they don't they at least at least that I'm getting. 
that I don't think they necessarily meant. Um, but then again, I am harsh when it comes to this kind of thing. So because I want this stuff to work and because I've seen so many failures and, and sometimes how you phrase um, the to do list can actually make the difference between success and failure. And I've seen this so many times. That's why I'm basically sounding like a hard ass on this one. Sorry, I'm not yeah. I'm not I'm not going to apologize on it because I want this stuff to work. And it's not going to work if it's phrased in either an unclear and or mealy mouth manner so that the readers don't understand what the hell you're trying to tell them to do or suggest. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess I, I guess I can see that. For me, though, as I said, I didn't have a problem with it initially, and I, I still really don't. I can see your I can see your criticisms, but you know, Kyle, I, I guess I disagree with you a little bit. I'm sorry, bud. Uh, that's fine. It's supposed to, <laughs> that's fine. It's supposed to be a free country where people disagree and they don't resort to violence whenever they do disagree. That 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 was kind of the whole point. That's yeah. what the even even the limited government people. Uh, where despite all of their hangups, which we need not go into here tonight, uh, despite all of their hangups, that they were of the same mind too, right? This is supposed to be a free country where individuals disagree with each other about some things, and they do not resort to violence because of the disagreement. Yeah, age of enlightenment and all, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah it, it was basically to try to – well, I mean on a more precise historical note, the whole point was to actually get away from the violence that had – between Catholics and Protestants in England. I mean that's kind of where that was coming from. So the idea is let's not do that. Let's have like religious toleration and a few other things. And, and then obviously the idea got broadened down to just the religious issues. But yeah, in a free country, individuals are supposed to disagree with each other without resorting to violence because of the disagreement. That was kind yeah, of I don't. Point. I don't feel like beating your ass or anything, Kyle. So yeah, don't worry about that. I mean, yeah, yeah it's, well, okay. it's okay. But, but, that, but that's even what the minarchists would call civil society, which is something I agree with. If you are going to have one, can you at least be well, like the name implies, civil about it? You're dis- can you at least be civil about your disagreements? That that that's kind of where that's can't come. Like like the words actually mean things when you say civil society. Maybe not the society part, but the civil part's the important one. Can you actually be civil with people you disagree with? Then that's all I'm right. saying. Right. Okay. Uh, number four. Start saving so you can invest into the second realm when opportunities come up. Uh, again, and this is when I was preparing for my or when I was when I was preparing for my building the second realm presentation. Uh, one, I, I guess, one of the things I realized was that I need to come up with more examples of some of these things, but. I it's kind of hard to right because they don't really explain it. Uh, you know, like uh, well, what second realm opportunities might come up? Can you can you provide some examples? Uh, I guess I guess not. I guess not. But um, anyways, the first part of that start saving. Yes, it, it, I don't care if you're if you're gonna you know start second realms. You know, pursue van nomadism if you have no 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 idea whatsoever. You know, pursue financial independent early retirement because you know a few years down the road when you maybe make a decision as I did. Then uh, you know you're you're already ahead of the curve, and you know if, for Van Nomadism, you might be ready to you know hit the road you know quickly. Uh, so start saving. That's a great recommendation, regardless of whether you're going to build second realms or not. But uh, but yeah, Kyle, I'm not sure you know what second realm opportunities might come up. You know, as they say in a later one, uh, you know hoarding hoard, hoarding, and I mean I don't mean that in a negative way, but I'm just going to use that word. Uh, you know, hoarding you know digital currencies. Uh, so you can you know pursue a proxy merchant occupation you know uh, you know in a second realm. I mean that's the only one I can really think of. Maybe uh, buying an industrial park uh, as, as a, a recommendation you've kind of uh, you know thought of for following in cities, Kyle. Uh, I mean what what the hell do they mean here? Yeah, on on regarding number four, this one I can get behind completely. Number four is good. Number four, it's phrased right, it's to the point, it's specific, it's an actionable item. It's it's basically the, it's actually the uh really the second real uh one on this list as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, because you need to have some uh and um, what what did Mises call it um capital some some sort of capital it's some sort of what thank you as mises old man mises put it it's uh investment capital you need some investment capital in order to well invest uh when when the opportunities come up so yeah number four is a good one yeah yeah i agree i agree uh so number five take digital privacy seriously start using pgp i2p and similar uh learn about secure online behavior well they say secure behavior but uh, they mean online behavior uh, considering the recommendations, but I agree with this one 100%, Kyle. I mean, since uh, you know you got me said with PGP and we kind of talked about encryption and all of that, I've been uh, getting on people's asses to use uh, you know encryption since then. Uh, so yeah, take digital privacy seriously. Yeah, uh, without a doubt, without a doubt. And then they list a couple of possibilities: uh, PGP, pretty good privacy; I2P, the Internet Invisibility Project, and similar things like uh, like the like the Darknet, the deep web services. services. Yeah, use them. <laughs> you know, increase that privacy. Thankfully, you know, Monero. Uh, one of the things they're adding on, I don't. Uh, it's it starts with a K. 
Oh, what the hell is it called? Uh, but one of the new protocols they're putting into place is uh, so so you you don't know who's sending what to who. You don't know how much they're sending, but you can still find the IP address of the person sending uh, or receiving. I guess is the the issue. You can still detect the IP addresses. So what they're going to do is overlay I2P over it. And then the IP addresses will be hidden too. So I think this is yeah, I, I love this one. I you know I wish they would have uh, you know added you know learn about on secure online behavior because that's what they're talking about. But this one I have, I have no issues with. Uh yeah, I mean the for the most part it's good. Um, mm, mm. The only issue I have with is that they're limiting themselves to digital. I think it would might have been better if they said, like, go more a little bit more general and say, like, privacy in general. Include right. some more digital stuff specifically, right, but yeah, then... Pra practice the gray man, too, or what, whatever other suggestions. Yeah, I, you know, a hybrid. The, digital realm, yeah. the hybrid. I, like like I wrote when I wrote my book on security culture. I mean, I, d I did a hybrid approach, which I think which I think is the most fair in order to appeal to the widest, uh, mar you know, market selection and all that, uh, because some people like computers and some people don't, and some people want to do both, and then of course the people who do neither obviously wouldn't read my book. <laughs> so um, that's where I'm kind of getting at. I mean, so kudos, it's a good point, but not everybody wants to use a computer anyway. But that that's I mean, but then again, when they said learn about secure behavior, it's like what's a secure behavior? I mean, that's maybe, kind of maybe it. maybe that's their like I don't know. Maybe they left out left yeah. out online because that they were trying to make it a hybrid, but they didn't do it in a good way. If that's what they're trying to do. So so I, I I like the spirit of it. It's it's a good start, but this reads more like but this number five reads more like a draft, and it's like yeah, good place. I know where they were going. Needs to be broadened. And maybe like a few other examples, like the. I mean, it's it's basically like. Well, hell, maybe maybe we should uh, maybe we should you know do a uh, you know a joint article, I guess, just kind of critique or I guess you know altering this list uh, well, I did to the make same it thing. more clear. Well, well, yeah, I mean, I did the same thing with with Rayo's uh, libertarians and coercivist article, right, where I basically right. just wrote the whole thing uh, and kept it in the same spirit. And I personally like my version better, but then again, I'm biased. Um, I guess we could do the same thing with this list. We need to go down the rest of the list, though, to kind of make right, the case why right. this kind of needs a, re a redo. Um, right. But yeah, so yeah, yeah, just just because you know we're disagreeing with with some of this, I mean, Rayo, we we do a whole podcast, you know, talking about his ideas and the strategies proposed and developing upon those, obviously. But you know, we disagreed with Rayo too. <laughs> like that article was fucking awful. It was terrible. It was really really bad. Um, but, but yeah, I just wanted to toss that out there. See, I mean, yeah, the strategy's still good, and you know, the book's still good. But you know, they, you know, the human beings, you know, they make mistakes. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, let, let's get on with the rest of it. All right, uh, next one, number six. There are some digital autonomous zones out there. Join them and spend time building your reputation. Uh, so this would be, you know, going to like the deep web IRC chat, the, uh, the hashtag Agora, that IRC chat, and going on there and just chatting with people when when they're there. And, uh, you know, getting your, your pseudonym, your, your online chosen name or whatever, uh, you know, getting some reputation behind that, making some trades or whatever, whatever, uh, whatever is happening. Uh, you know, yeah, definitely, uh, you know, spend time building your reputation. Um, yeah, and I, I would have, I would have a, an issue with this. You know, there, there are some physical, you know, autonomous zones too, right? <laughs> so, you know, make sure you spend time in the physical realm too, you know, at physical second realms like freedom festivals. But they do have, uh, you know, one pertaining to that coming up next. Uh, number seven. So, uh, I guess the, that 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 uh, I guess lackingness in that one, you know, gets clarified in the next one. But anything on number six? Um, why does it have to be limited to the digital? Again, much like five. Why is it have to be limited to the digital version? Um, yeah, that's what I was saying. Again, it's covered number seven. They could have combined, but yeah, I know. I they, they and and I mean, even even Hakeem Bay himself said, you know, we need both digital and and like you know IRL. Uh, as as the internet kids would call it, uh, we need more digital and IRL, and yeah, it's it's kind of like sure, because like not everybody wants to use a computer, and why not do a high again? Why not do a hybrid? Let's give people as many choices as possible. You know, that's kind of all I'm saying. I mean, hell, some of the tazes that I've actually, by the way, Shane, I've gone to a few tazes, by the way. Um, same here. Yeah, I know, and I gotta say, I think I like the IRL ones better than. Than just because it, I mean, if you're actually there, that that really is kind of the second realm in in the flesh, where you can like you know shake somebody's hand kind of thing. I mean that that really, if there is such a thing as a free society, quote unquote, then that that's what it has is real world IRL, so to speak. So that that that's kind of what I'm getting at. 
Right, right. So number seven, network with others, but not only in the digital, but also in the physical. Have a few drinks together or start a project to clear your meetings as being autonomous. Uh, so as I said, you know, they kind of clarify that there. <laughs> they do, but it should have just been kind of been combined. But yeah, I, I agree. I've said I've said similar things. I'm going to say the same thing in my in my uh, building the second realm presentation for the Midwest Peace Liberty Fest. These digital autonomous zones, these digital second realms are great. Obviously, uh, they're fantastic. They do a lot of good. They do a lot of good things. But uh, the reason people have cravings for freedom festivals is because uh, you know digital isn't always in the, isn't always enough for everybody. For most folks, it seems being in the same physical space and time is important, right? <laughs> it, it has to go beyond just the internet. Uh, it has to. Well, yeah, I I think that kind of goes without saying, especially if the if the um, if the conspiracies do happen to be right about the emergence of internet too then yeah, it's going to have to be. Um, not saying computers are bad, not saying technology is bad, especially after our blessings of technology episode, what are, right? Uh, what are, what's Computer 2? Internet 2? Internet 2, yeah. Oh, that's okay. The really super brief, short version... Yeah, yeah, give us a good... Tell, uh, this could be an entire it. episode by itself. Okay, super short really versions, basically, uh, supposedly the Obama administration was basically supposed to put in an internet kill switch, which would kill the current old internet, and then impose some sort of evil draconian internet too, where basically everyone is tracked and, tra tra tracked and traced and scanned even more so okay. than they are now, and everyone have to have like a personal login. Basically, the entire internet would be like one big VPN system, which is great if you wanted your own personal VPN, but then like the ISPs would treat it like one big VPN, and and nobody would be even pseudonymous, even. Uh, and supposedly there were going to be biometrics going to be involved in terms of actually logging on to the Internet and, like, really, really creepy evil shit. So that's, like, the whole Internet, too, explained in, like, I don't know, 20 seconds, maybe? Uh, and I might have gotten a few details wrong because it's been a couple of years since I've read that kind of stuff. I, I just haven't heard the uh, internet too. I've heard, I've heard of those things, so the internet kill switch and such. Huh? Interesting. I it's didn't know. This the, it's 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 part. Of, oh yeah, the Pentagon's been wanting. <clears throat> excuse me. The conspiracists have claimed that <laughs> the Pentagon. Nice been rewording. Uh, hey, I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to do this really oh, quick. Weird. <laughs> the conspiracists have claimed that the Pentagon has wanted to implement a Internet to kill. Uh, excuse me, the Internet to since uh, at least Bush's Bush Jr.'s second term, if not before then, and that uh, allegedly it was supposed to happen during Obama's terms, but then it didn't happen because we're still using the the only existing Internet now. I don't know. Um, it's it, it was just kind of a lot of uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe some of that's true. Maybe not. That 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 that's going to be its own episode at some point if if you ever wanted to get into that and yeah, try to get to. Yeah, the It'll be, it'll be interesting, yeah, getting into a conspiracy, yeah, especially one like that, technology-based, yeah. Right, that'd be fun, that'd be fun. All right, number eight, give up collectivist thought, especially asking for permission and requiring others to support you before you do anything. This one is huge. I love that they toss this in there. Uh, I really, really do. It's what we talk about over on the Vani podcast, right, exercising those collectivist spooks, you know, getting getting rid of that uh, controlled schizophrenia. Uh, you know, it's a process, but it needs to it needs to be done. Uh, it needs to be done, and the longer you are, I guess, inundated in the servile society with propaganda, uh, the harder that will be to overcome, I, I imagine, for, for most folks. So, uh, yeah, give up collectivist thought, exercise those collectivist spooks, and get rid of controlled schizophrenia. Yeah, 100% uh, agree. And uh, that last one is important, too, requiring others to support you before you do anything. Yes, that co that goes along with this with this process of exercising those things. If that if I was uh, still if I was still a controlled schizophrenic to the degree that I was, uh, my, my you know my I, just for my my parents' disagreements and kind of their uh, you know their ridicule uh, for the lifestyle change that I'm going to be pursuing, uh, you know I wouldn't have done it because you know they they thought they said it was crazy. They would've, he would my dad would have convinced me pretty easily that you know I sh something I shouldn't do. Uh, but now uh, no, <laughs> doesn't work. Doesn't work. Uh, you know, they're, they're of the first realm, unfortunately, and they aren't going to understand my second realm decisions. So that's kind of what it comes down to. Uh, you know, it's your life. You, you only have one life and, uh, you know, barring, you know, religious discussions. And, uh, I don't want to live a slave. I don't know about any of you guys, but I don't want to live a slave, uh, live life, uh, a slave as any longer than I possibly have to. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to take some steps to, 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 to be free. So, uh, what do you think of number eight? Yes. However... Shouldn't that technically be the first thing? Yeah, as we started, uh, yeah, as we, as we began season three of the Bonnie podcast with, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think I think kind of what's going on here is probably um, sequence of events, sequence of events, folks. You should have given up the, I would suggest, <laughs> as a strategist myself, I would suggest that maybe you should give up the collectivist thought before 
for making the decision to build up the second realm. Hey, that's just me. Sequence of events actually matters to me. Yeah, um, and, and, and as I said in uh, the episode with Reagan in the series, uh, I didn't really, I didn't used to get much of the kind of the emotional or mental portion, uh, you know, much much credit at all. But uh, I don't really think it'd be a cohesive, uh, you know, free environment. I think there'd be some complications if you had a bunch of controlled schizophrenic political crusaders joining second realms. Uh, so I think that definitely needs to happen first, getting rid of that collectivist thought. See, I think this should be number one. You know, as I, as I said, we, we started the season three of the Vonnie podcast discussing exercising those collectivist spooks and the controlled schizophrenia. I mean, there's a reason why we did that, right? Uh, so, yeah, yeah, this, yeah, this, that one's, yeah, I, I like the suggestion, but it should be number one. It really should be. Yeah. Or, I mean, unless there's something else that needs to go before them, but at, at least at this point... It shouldn't just, be number eight. That's the point. God, okay, yeah, this whole thing needs to be rewritten. Sorry. Anyway, this, 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 you know what this reads like? It's like a, it's like, it's like a, a working draft that was, like, jimmied up in, like, less than ten minutes. It's like, like a bunch of random shit that came in the, whoever's head, and he's like, okay, I'll write this down quickly, but I'm uh, pretty much at the end of the book. Let's just go ahead and send it out. I mean, it was just, it's just lazy. It's lazy. So maybe get like a proofreader next time, you know, or an editor or something. I mean, again, don't want to sound like a dick, but you know, do you want to sell this or not? Um, well, anyhow, they, let's they keep... don't want to sell it. Well, oh, they want to sell you the idea in the second round, but they don't want to sell the book. I get what you're saying. Yeah, res- as soon as I started saying that, I knew. Uh, um, anyways, uh, number how nine. How can you make it your goal to achieve liberty based on the strategy or variation of it if you can't like persuade people to much of anything? I'm just saying, right. basic salesmanship, guys. Not everything in sales has to be done in exchange for ferns. That's all I'm <laughs> right. saying. God damn it, think this through. <laughs> right, right. I mean, number... it's gotta, okay, okay, okay. Hold on. Quick, quick analogy. It's like when you're on a date, actually first date, not even second or third. I'm saying first date. You are selling yourself to your potential lover and or spouse, okay? That's what I'm kind of getting at. Again, Fern's not – I mean unless we're talking about like paying for dinner or something, whether you go Dutch or something, but that's a side issue. But you're not like selling yourself into prostitution, at least I hope not. I mean unless that's what you really want to do. If if it's more of a romance thing, you are selling yourself – because you want to be attracted to whomever you are hoping to woo and probably seduce. Okay? There is a there is a form of salesmanship at play. Okay? That's what I'm more talking about. Same thing here. You are trying to sell people that this that the you know the the strategy of the second realm is something that's worth doing. Okay, sell it, please. The rest of the book is like ranging from good to excellent. Don't fuck up what sales what professional salesmen by professional i mean like the guys who do like contract negotiations with like 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 where millions of dollars are at stake kind of thing don't fuck it up when you are as sale professional salesmen would call asking for the order that's actually an industry term by the way asking for the order which basically means when you're actually asking the customer okay do you want to buy from me or not okay that i mean million when you get into the like the big leagues sometimes involving multinationals but sometimes not when like lots of money and property is on the line, depending on how contract negotiations go, it can really come down to asking for the order. And unfortunately, the impression I get from here is that they're kind of fucking up on asking for the order. And it's like, no, you were so beautifully wonderful up until this point, And now you're just failing right at the end. It's like, no, this is the most important part. This is where you close the de- – it's also known as yeah, closing this, this the is, deal. This is where you get people action steps to actually pursue the strategy. Yeah. Hey, hey, I know there's a certain statist who claims to have written the art of the deal, if you know who I mean. But my god, I actually do know something about this kind of thing. You know, the art of the deal, if we're being really honest, is that you have to ask for the order and do it in such a way that you maximize the best probability of actually securing um, an actual like buy, if you will. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, and closing the deal successfully is when the customer says, yes, I want to buy. It doesn't matter if it's a shirt or an entire network of manufacturing plants or whatever is being traded. OK, ask for the order, close that deal. Get it done. And if you don't, you have yourself to blame because you didn't sell it well enough. I mean, my yeah. God, people say they want a free market. This is part of it. I mean, it's either yeah, the this free market or... of the free market of ideas. Yeah. Well, that well, free market be of strategies, specific. yeah. Well, well, yeah, to be more specific about it, right? That's what Sam Conkin was kind of getting out of the Libertarian Manifesto when he was talking about buying and selling strategy and tactics and so forth. Yep. And, so, and so, yes, folks, if you don't ask for that order and you don't close that deal, you have yourself to blame for not doing a better job. 
And maybe you were targeting the wrong customer and maybe this, maybe that. But if you didn't do it right, that's on you. And you know what? That's part of a free market too. The freedom to succeed and the freedom to fail. Because the only all real alternative is that we all do this whole status crap game of coercion and lobbying and democracy and voting in elections and bribery. The first realm, yeah. And war, because that's, the, that's what it eventually degrades down into, especially when we're talking about monarchy. And that's the only real alternative in practical utilitarian terms. So would you prefer a voluntary, negotiable, deal-making, not in the, not in the lobbying sense, but deal-making, uh, you know, contract negotiations, some degree of salesmanship, not the, not the creepy, uh, like, Madison Avenue stuff, but I mean, honestly, like, are we, are we going to, like, trade? You're, sell, you're, selling, you're selling a product of value. Do you want to do that or do you want the state? Because that's – because historically as, as, as humans, as, especially like if we're talking about like evolution or evolving beyond the state, this is where it's at. And I know it may not exactly be comfortable or something that you want to hear, but if – you know, again, what does being active for liberty mean? Um, that's – I mean yes, I am throwing that little one in there. Um, because you can't achieve libertarian ends through status means as Konkin put it. Yeah. So Function that's – Function determines kind of, form. Mm, function determines form, baby. Yep. And so, as old man Rayo put it, so that's kind of where it's at. That is exactly where it's at, is you, if you want to sell this, it has to be voluntary. And I would suggest kind of like in the context of like a contract negotiating type of thing, we're trying to persuade people to accept your uh, strategy as a valuable, sellable, maybe not necessarily commodity, but a valuable, sellable thing. And and that I mean that's free market too, right? The means have to match the ends. I mean, this isn't that complicated, but people don't think about it this way because they're still thinking political crusading for Christ's sakes, which is statist. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, all right, number nine, give up the quest for philosophical uh, hom uh, homogeneity. We also differ. We will always we'll always differ in the details. Uh, I love this one. I really do because I'm doing this right. I'm doing this. I've said many times that I've I'd. I'd I'd choose a leftist, peaceful van nomad over many anarcho-capitalists today. All just the pure theorists who never, who don't take any steps to increase their personal freedom. Some of them, you know, even fell back into political crusading. Some of them, uh, you know, uh, even fell back into pol political crusading so much as to endorse the uh, the the, uh, the current uh, ruler, uh, so-called ruler. So, yeah, you know, even if, uh, you know, the, these leftist van nomads, you know, some of them, you know, did this because rent is theft or they think that, um, then, uh, you know, they're still out there, you know, pursuing their own freedom. They've given up polit political crusading and uh, they're trying to they're trying to increase their own personal freedom. So, yeah, I'd much rather, you know, uh, <laughs> I wish I wish there were a lot more, you know, anarcho capitalists pursuing these lifestyle changes. But, um, you know, it's a lot of them, you know, a lot of the folks on the left do, per do pursue these and a lot of them are, you know, not bad individuals. They just need a you know a stern talking to about you know what uh, what their ideas can turn into. Um, <laughs> well, it might be a, a bad way of putting it, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway, let's to purposes of time. Let's get on with it. All right, number ten: start or support local OTC exchanges. Build a position of digital currency so you can partake in covert commerce. So, this one's interesting. Start or support local OTC exchanges. I'm not uh, I. I Again, when I when I was uh, you know when I'm when I was running through my presentation that I'm gonna do at the MPL Fest, I was like, oh, I need to think of examples for OTC exchanges, and it's like I don't really I can't think of any. I don't know what they're really talking about. Over the counter exchanges? Are they talking about you know an over the counter deal at Walmart? I mean, I or like an over the counter counter deal like uh, you know buying cryptocurrencies from an individual rather than through an exchange. I mean, they don't really really say that. But yeah, in the second second portion of this, they allude to digital currency. So are they only talking about digital currency OTC exchanges? I I, I really don't know. Um, I do agree with that last part. Yeah, build a position of digital currency so you can partake in covert commerce. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, you know, buy that crypto and, and hodl as the uh, as it's so as it's called in uh, in uh, I guess crypto culture. So uh, yeah, buy it and hold it. You know, if if not for financial independence, uh, you know, maybe as an occupation in the future. Sure, why not? Jeez, <laughs> yeah, I mean this this one's fantastic too. Um, much like the, much like number four, where it's specific, it's actionable, it's to the point, it's concise, it's pithy even. Um, uh, I would say number 10 is, is a lot like that. It's just good, 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 good. Yes. Actionable. Fantastic. You did it right the first time. Yeah. 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 I just wish there'd be more examples. That's all. But I, again, these are hints. We're supposed to come up with the, with the ODC exchanges, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, Anyways, number 11, live a culture of liberty, support the autonomy of others visibly, respect. 
Uh, <sighs> I know this, you have an issue with this one, don't you? Okay, so number <laughs> okay, hold. Let me. I'm going to jump around a bit. So number nine could be combined with number eight, which could also be combined with numbers three and one. And hell, at this rate, since we're talking about eleven, we can just kind of combine that into eleven. So it's like all those different ones. It's like you don't need to. Uh, regarding a list I, of like seven or eight things, right? Oh, uh, geez, the list is getting a lot shorter. Uh, hey, look, I'm I'm a big fan of top ten lists, so maybe we can kind of get it down to ten or even top five, depending. But um, I don't know. It's kind of like if you give up collectivist thought, I would assume philosoph- ph- philosophical homogeneity would kind of go with, along with it too, right? Because if individuals are individuals with their preferences and own ideas and so forth, then the homo- homogeneity is going to go away too, right? Because homogeneity, whether philosophical or not, is collectivist. So, unless I'm making a mistake here and how I'm conceiving yeah. <laughs> of it, if homogeneity yep. is collectivist, and you're saying give up collectivism, but then also give up, give up, you know, homogeneity, it's kind of like, uh, because individuals are heterogeneous, by the way, uh, we're all different. Uh, if individuals are heterogeneous, then saying give up homogeneity and give up collective, well, you don't, you don't need to sparse it. You're saying the same thing twice, just in two different ways. <laughs> so why Fair are enough. you spilling ink on the page that much? I mean, again, don't mean to sound like a dick. I'm just trying to make this to work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number 12, insert kindness and strength into the world. Charity and justice are for you to do. Uh, that one could be combined in that one too, right? I mean, what was, um, it's basically a different way of wording number 11. Um, at least to, to some extent, which is a different way of wording eight and nine and one and three. It's it's just let me put it this way. I think number 12, if it was dramatically redone, I think what they were trying to say is basically um, it's almost like equal parts mutual aid plus vigilantism yeah, is actually that's the impression yeah, that's i got too, yeah. but they didn't say it like that because when i say mutual aid and i say vigilantism you know exactly what i'm talking about regarding both because they because they those two things to do two noticeably different things but they're specific enough there's no specificity here what the hell is kindness and strength in the world i mean that could be i mean now technically the kindness would be the mutual aid and the strength would be the uh, the vigilantism. You know, the charity is the mutual aid. The justice is the vigilantism. So why not actually use those words that are specific enough to get the point across and do it quickly? I mean, because technically, if you say t- kindness and strength and charity and justice, well, Jesus, I mean, that's so vague. That could be fucking anything. I mean, I mean, hell, the welfare state is justified as a form of charity, technically, by lefty <laughs> commie types. No, mutual aid and vigilantism. I mean, unless there, I mean, unless there's a different conception of justice, like we're talking about DROs or something, but they didn't say that. I have no fucking clue what they're talking about here. I'm just guessing <laughs> at this point. So anyway, don't mean to be a dick, but you know, specificity is important if you're making a li- actionable list of, uh, uh, you know, uh, or as as my as my corporate uh, overlords would say, we need to have ac- you need to have action items. Okay, fine, let's do action items. Specificity is good. God damn it. Right, right. Uh, so number 13, encourage other, encourage others that work for liberty who invest and produce. Now, I know what they're saying here, but I, I don't think it's worded in the best way. But yeah, we're nitpicking grammar and, you know, word, you know, a sense structure and such. But, yeah, I mean, obviously support those who are, uh, you know, doing terrific things. Like Jamie Baconic, you know, who's building those ghost paths for people, you know, giving people privacy for, you know, a lot of people privacy for the first time. Uh, right, I guess digital privacy for the first time. Yeah, encourage and promote those folks. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> why? Why would you? Why would you? Um, you know, support a status business when you can support you know an anarchist business? It just it just doesn't. It just you know this one's kind of self evident. I think. Yeah, I I I think so. Encourage other people to invest and produce. Sorry, I'm getting. Oh God, this is getting painful, Shane. It just is. Okay, because I've just done this so many times before. Okay. Yes, we're now getting into redundancy with what? What? What's the current list? One, three, um, eight, nine, eleven, and twelve, and now thirteen is like, god damn it! I mean, I guess maybe hypothetically thirteen could be redundant with um, 
I don't know, four maybe. I don't know. I just, it's just like, what does this mean? Encourage others to work for liberty. Who would, I mean, I guess maybe it's a bolt. Hell, actually, no, technically, actually, scratch that. 13 is actually redundant with seven. See, now I'm just getting so damn confused. It's like, okay, I know it's redundant, but which previous one was it redundant with? It's like the horrible game of match it up. I mean, it's just like, yeah, these, this is a draft. This this list of 15 things is totally a draft because now, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting into the nitty gritty and I'm getting frustrated because <laughs> it would be so easy for me if I wasn't working seven days a week to actually take a look. Actually, I could still do it anyway, but actually rewrite this and get it done to the point where not only would it probably be more of a top five list, but the point is, is that it would be clear, concise and to the point. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Even if you fucking hate my guts and want me dead, you at least know what I'm saying. Because here, I don't know what anybody's saying. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. Like, 10 is great about the OTC exchangers. Um, number four is great because it's, 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 you know, about the investment capital. And number five is good, just need a little bit of work. But the rest of it, but there's other, I mean, geez, it's like all over the fucking place. Anyway, I'm going to shut up. Just please, let's get on with the rest of it. All right, Ugh. so I'll, cover, I'll tackle these last two. Uh, so 14, if you're an artist, writer, musician, fashion designer, or whatever, uh, run wild in creating our new culture. And 15, begin with defining your boundaries, shun people who actively attack liberty, and deny autonomy to others. So, uh, you know, I don't really have uh, an issue with either of those. I, I think it's uh, it's good that they brought up culture again because, uh, you know, the alt-right is right about something. Uh, it's uh, that culture is important. Culture is, a, you know, a spontaneous thing that's... Uh, that uh, you know comes into second realms or I guess state of societies or whatever. It's just a, uh, it's just uh, a way to to convey symbolism and uh, you know I guess uh, better integration into uh, I guess that uh, society or whatever. It's it's kind of a natural thing. Um, so yeah, I mean that's sure. You know I'm glad they brought up culture again, but I think at Freedom Festivals whenever everyone's wearing anarchist merch and selling anarchist merch, I think that's uh, the culture is already being taken care of without anyone even you know having any conscious effort in it. Uh, or maybe, you know, not even having to have conscious effort. It's just kind of, uh, you know, spontaneously comes about, right? So uh, that's 14, 15. Yeah, ostracism. Uh, I, I, I think that one, you know, maybe, you know, giving up collectivist thought, um, especially asking for permission, requiring others to support you before you do anything. Yeah, well, I, I think you'd probably, you know, cut some people out of your life too at that time. So uh, I don't know. I, I don't think 15 is really necessary. Although I, um... it's good that they brought up ostracism. Let I okay, I'm gonna disagree with you on this one, and here's why. <sighs> okay, fourteen might be okay by itself. I mean, basically you know what it's really saying. I mean, this is this is kind of like culture jamming slash artistic something or another. Um it's starting to sound a little bit redundant with some of those other ones, but but if it was phrased differently, it could actually be kind of okay. Um, in the sense of, you know, even what the Russians would call the culture creation industry. Um, I know what they were trying to get at with 14, where basically it was, you know, actually, actually, you know what, the, sorry about the sound. You know what, actually, in the background, somebody was rubbing their motorcycle. Uh, again, if that would be a new invention, quiet motorcycles, right? Um, I know what they were trying to get at with 14, where it's about aesthetics, right? I mean, notice, artist, writer, musician, fashion designer, or whatever, creating our new culture. So they're talking about aesthetics, so if that is indeed the case, then that could technically be one by itself. I would just rewrite it completely differently, to, but try to keep the spirit of it and get it more specific. Right, because um, the, the aesthetics lead people to the second realm, just like, you know, hashtag Agora. Um, you know, hashtag Agora has done that for some, maybe me, maybe you. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that's the aesthetic portion is important. You know, Lodging of Wayfaring Men was first posted anonymously on Interplex. So, I mean, the, these, the, the fictional stuff does help to convey the ideas of freedom and convince people the efficacy of these ideas and strategies. So, I, 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 I guess that is, an imp that is a really important one and one to emphasize, I suppose. Yes. Um, or at the very least, have it as an actionable item that stands on its own. Um, that, that's good. Uh, 15, 15, I think, is, is rather important. And actually, it might be one of the better phrased ones on this entire list. I think there is a place for ostracism. I'm very much with Sam Konkin about that. Um, but like much like old man Konkin said, uh, you know, ostr you know, social shunning is a two way street, so use it accordingly. Yeah, I, I, I think that's pretty much what I'm kind of getting at here. I mean, these last two are actually pretty good. Um, again, at most, maybe some re maybe a slight rewrite for 14, but I, I, I think ostracism is important. 
I mean, I mean, the whole point, I mean, a good chunk of the, I mean, the very constant second realm is, you know, having borders, uh, private property borders, not the uh, fictional government border along the Rio Grande or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I mean, th- this is just kind of where it's at. So, um, yeah, we need borders, private property borders. Right, right. So that concludes the list of 15, the next steps that Smoker and XYZ recommend in their book, Second Realm Book on Strategy. Again, I'd recommend you check that out. But let's go ahead and, and uh, begin to close out this episode. So I think the, <laughs> the general theme is uh, there's some good ones here. There's some really good ones. Um, unfortunately, there's some uh, redundancy and uh, some, some vagueness and, uh, and uh, you know, a couple few of them. So that's unfortunate. But uh, overall, I think the I, I think it's uh, it's important. It's a good start. It's a good start. Like Rayo's uh, article trying to, I guess, identify the different, uh, I guess, the different s- segments of uh, schools of thoughts of, uh, you know, statism and, uh, or I guess, coercivists and libertarians. I think it was, uh, you know, a worthwhile effort, but, uh, but yeah, I think there's, uh, I think it could be done a little better, don't you think? Yeah, this needs a rewrite. I see the spirit of it. I see where they were going with it. There's definitely good suggestions in here. It's just unclear as shit. I mean, it's really bad. I mean, this this is this is we, basically we need, to get that, we need to get that done before my presentation at the Midwest Peace Liberty Fest, and I'll I'll uh, read that one instead. <laughs> I <laughs> it'll, I it'll think... help my presentation a little better. Yeah, because there's some words like I, I know I'm going to get questions on some of these. Like, what what are some example examples of X, Y, and Z? Uh, I don't know, bud. I you know maybe I haven't taken enough time to think about it and and, and really come to some conclusions, or maybe I just don't know what the hell they're talking about. I mean, uh, <laughs> so yeah, clarifying those and getting something more concrete put out might uh, help me out in that too. So yeah, we need to do that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I think you're right. The I mean, this is this is basically what I'm reading here reminds me very much of Old Man Rayo's Libertarians and Coercivists article as he wrote it. And then basically, you know, these decades later, I rewrote it, and I personally think my version's better. Um, Definitely more accurate. Yeah, and, and don't get me wrong. It's not even like the, the, the time period difference. It really wasn't even about that, although obviously anybody who read both versions can tell there's that there's a time period difference. It's not even so much that. It was just his version, original version was like – like a working draft that wasn't done yet. And I can see why John Fisher didn't put into the original Vanu book. I think that was a good editing decision Fisher made. Um, similarly to Rayo's original article on libertarians and coercivists, um, this list of 15 things in the, in the book on strategy is this is, this is, this is the down part. This is, this is the lame part of the book. Frankly, it's lame. It's lame. I'm sorry. It's lame. It's not good. The rest of I can, I'll repeat it again. The rest of the book ranges from good to excellent, and at that point, it's just like eh, we can nitpick all day long. I'm, I'm not interested in doing that tonight. But this list is is it's not even necessarily bad because I've seen bad. Okay, this isn't bad. It's just lame, and I want it to be at least good, if not excellent. So that's kind of where I'm coming at it from. I'm coming at it for the <laughs> what's the corporate term? quality control. I'm looking at this from a quality perspective. And the quality is like a diamond in the rough at best. So yeah, it you know it it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I'm glad they included. It. I'm glad they put forth an attempt because uh, uh, you know like I, like we said, there are some good things on there, but uh, unfortunately, yeah, as a whole, it's uh, it's definitely lacking. So uh, you can look forward to that uh, at libertyunderattack.com. I'm probably even mirrored at uh, vonniepodcast.com too because it's pretty relevant. It's pretty uh, pretty similar material. So. Uh, so yeah, you can look forward to uh, I guess a read. Uh, what is it? A Redux version, correct of, uh, of this list uh, in the near future. Uh, you know, maybe in the next couple of weeks, maybe we can uh, toss that out there as a spoken discourse as episode uh, you know sixteen of the podcast. I don't know of the series. I don't know. We'll see uh, when we come to that. But uh, yeah, you can look forward to that. Uh, anything else, Kyle? I would say that once this list has a redux, maybe we should do uh, maybe some sort of a version of a follow up just to kind of like run through it because. This thing needs to be fixed. I mean, this entire episode is basically going down this list and basically looking at the good, the bad, and the ugly, as we have, and then basically kind of suggesting fixes to it. So I agree. Yeah, we'll do, we can do an episode on this, yeah. My, my, or even just like a short follow-up or something. But yeah, again, just as, as we kind of begin to close out here, all I'm really saying is I see where the authors are going with this. The embryonic elements of it are good. One or two of them are even excellent. But the execution was lacking here. It's not a failure, 
but it's getting close and in the sense that it's lame. It's just lame. I mean, I, I wouldn't even say it's mediocre. It's just lame. I've seen mediocre. This isn't mediocre. This is downright lame. So if it can kind of get spruced up, I think we I think we can get it up to at least good. And um, and that's kind of where I'm coming at it from. And, um, you know, if people want a free market and, and all that. This is this, this is the creative destruction of the free market at play here, too, by the way. You're, you're seeing it actually in or I should say hearing it in motion uh, where, where somebody comes along like, you know what? I can do a better job than my, um, you know, uh, friendly or in some cases not so friendly competitors and all that. And then they actually have to step up and do it because that's what entrepreneurs do. They try to make life better for people uh, uh, in order to fulfill their own self-interest. So that that's all I'm really kind of getting at here. I think I think this part of it of the book needs some fixing. Other than that, yeah, it's a great and terrific book, obviously. Right. Uh, yeah, I guess anything else before I run through Smuggler and XYZ's version of uh, Next Steps? Well, let's get on with it. All right. So, uh, quick run through here. So this is their list of fifteen. Number one, make it your goal to achieve liberty based on this strategy or a variation of it. Number two, tell others that you are committed to being active for liberty. Number three, dedicate some of your time on a regular basis to spend working on the second realm. Number four, start saving so you can invest into the second realm when opportunities come up. Number five, take digital privacy seriously. Start using PGP, I2P, and similar. Learn about secure behavior. Number six, there are some digital autonomous zones out there. Join them and spend time building your reputation. Number seven, network with others, but not only in the digital, but also in the physical. Have a few drinks together or start a project. Declare your meetings as being autonomous. Number eight, give up collectivist thought, especially asking for permission and requiring others to support you before you do anything. Number nine, give up the quest for a philosophical homogeneity. We will always differ in the details. Number 10, start or support local OTC exchanges. Build a position of digital currency so you can partake in covert commerce. Number 11, live a culture of liberty, support the autonomy of others visibly, respect. Number 12, insert kindness and strength into the world. Charity and justice are for you to do. Number 13, encourage others that work for liberty who invest and produce. Number 14, if you're an artist, writer, musician, fashion designer, or whatever, run wild in creating our new culture. Number 15, and final, finally, begin with defining your boundaries, shun people who actively attack liberty, and deny autonomy to others. So that was uh, Smuggler and XYZ's version of Next Steps uh, in their book, Second Realm Book on Strategy. And uh, yeah, if you haven't listened to last week's episode, just really, really briefly, in short, yeah, we had some issues with these, didn't we, Kyle? Yeah, I mean, it was a combination of the phrasing. It was... Vagueness. It was that, the ambiguity. It was also the redundancy, too. I mean, there was there. Were, I mean, like I'm saying, I mean, there there were several factors involved. Where I think, in some total, it was just as if I was reading the draft version of what they had were of what they were trying to say. But then it was almost like the impression Shane I was getting was essentially that they were kind of like trying to hurry up and finish the book, and it was just kind of it was slapdash get it done kind of thing yeah, and this is and this is kind of the most important part of the book right you know the action and see and see okay so like there, okay for anybody that knows any any of my work like there's the whole book report thing i do right um and it's been like well in excess of a, whatever that number is i've done over the past several years okay 150 200 something like that. something like that i think last conservative count was like 180 something but we'll, like who's counting at this point um a couple of my readers are actually anywho i can say with authority not in the sense of like like rulers but in the sense of competency and expertise but was what i mean by authority i can say with authority that most authors, at least when they are writing about politics and or economics, and, and of course sometimes some other related things, even, even more of a social or cultural uh, context, that most nonfiction authors, when they are trying to explain a problem or issue in the world, will spend the super majority of the book whining and bitching and complaining and or, and or proving uh, or, or, or arguing their case and here's like 20 million different case studies and at most only right at the end or close to it sometimes they'll do it in the second to last chapter for some fucking reason which makes no sense they'll then very briefly 
the equivalent of like on one page, sometimes they'll take five pages at most out of a 329 page book. Okay. That actually happened once. They'll take five pages and actually describe how to potentially fix the problem they spent the past 300 some odd pages bitching about. And it's kind of like right. And see, that's dude, why that's why with, with the book I'm working on, we're, there's one chapter of the philosophizing, and the rest of it is, I mean, it's called direct action on the path to freedom, tentatively titled, obviously. But uh, you know, it's all action, like 99% of it. <laughs> oh, so yeah. And, and, and I'm glad you are because even like regardless of the subject matter, I'm glad you're doing it that way because you're already setting yourself apart from what I have seen to be the norm. The norm is not about fixing problems in the world, or at least, let me put it this way, getting the ball rolling on fixing problems in the world. It's not about that. It's about the world is screwed up. Let's go through the 20 million different details and try to persuade the reader that the world is screwed up, at least with regarding the specific issue. And then maybe as an afterthought, pretty much while I'm trying to finish up the, the final manuscript of the book and get off to my editor, maybe I'll throw in some, some like little fluff on there on maybe how to fix it potentially someday later. You know, parallel reality almost. I mean, it's it's so slapdash, last minute bullshit. It's not taken seriously, and it's always bugged me. Only very rarely, and I can say this with authority too, only very rarely, and I've leaped on tons of praise for the relatively few authors who have done this that I've written about. They will actually take some chunk of their book, not a lot. But they will take well more than five pages, usually about a chapter or even two or three chapters, and actually try to run through how to potentially fix the thing they've been spending most of the book complaining about. And those guys I love because right. they are at least seriously trying to fix things or at least get the ball rolling on fixing things in the world. Now, yes, the subject matter and the context is that it's usually like political crusading, but – I love them for at least approaching it seriously. I disagree with them. Okay, that that's a separate. I can say that a separate <laughs> well, thing. How, Paul, how can you take politics seriously, anyways? Though. <laughs> well, but but sometimes it'll be more like social issues or something. Uh, so it's not necessarily related to government or, or laws or, or okay, lawyers gotcha. or whatever. But but if they take even like one chapter, I thought I've seen other ones where they do like like two or three chapters. But even if they take one chapter and just focus. On oh this other horrible shit I've complained about okay let's let's hear here's some stuff like you reader I can suggest you readers to do or at least got the ball rolling I love those guys because even if I disagree with their approach or the specific methods that they're promoting you know I I can I you know I can I'm I'm happy to criticize when I think it's warranted I think it's also equally important to give praise when I think it's warranted as well you know you take the good with the bad kind of thing. And yeah, and as far as far as the rare. rest of this book, though, but it's rare. Uh, it's you know, rare. there's there's a lot of praise there, right? Yeah, and and so regarding so to getting back to second round book on strategy, unfortunately, the authors have made a more typical uh, are are doing something kind of more typical here rather than not. It's it's so slapdash last minute. I think I mentioned this in the previous episode too. Um, you know, it 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 needed to be fixed is what I'm saying. I think we mentioned that too. Right. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. So <clears throat> I guess the, the purpose of this episode is to present our Redux version. So uh, let's go ahead and do uh, and do that. So we have a uh, so it's, it, we're going to put it out as an article on the Vani podcast uh, in LUA. Well, probably just the uh, LUA website. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, definitely out on LUA for you guys to, to read. Um, so this is an article. I'll just, uh, you know, read it real quick and we'll discuss, quote, the following is a Redux version of the next steps portion of Smuggler and XYZ's book. Second round book on strategy. Overall, the book is fantastic, but we both felt this section was severely lacking in quality. Some of these recommendations were redundant, many were badly worded, a couple were later on in the list when they should be towards the beginning, and a few were vague or unclear. It is our goal to update and improve upon their framework in hopes of giving individuals, in, individuals interested in building Second Realms clear, concise actions they can take to bring their goals into fruition. Uh, all right, now the actual list. Uh, number one, make it your goal to live a culture of liberty. Spend your free time building the second realm, as well as visibly supporting the autonomy of others, whether that takes the form of mutual aid or vigilantism. Uh, number two, give up collectivist thought, especially asking for permission and requiring others to support you before you do anything. 
also give up the quest for uh, philosophical homogeneity. We always differ in the details. What's important is the end goal and respect for autonomy. And Kyle, if you want to jump in ever, uh, you know, to elaborate on any of these uh, changes or updates, uh, feel free. So number three, practice good security culture in both the digital and physical realms. And the former start using PGP, I2P, ZRTP, OTR, cryptocurrencies, etc. For the latter, practice being the gray man driving an inconspicuous vehicle, hardening your Vanu home, etc. On that, on that, uh, on that point, uh, for further, uh, more, more precise details about how to go about doing that, my last book, just below the surface, uh, you know, the guide on security culture, uh, read that and/or listen to the audiobook version. Uh, we'll give you more details about just what is the gray man and home hardening and 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 like stuff about PGP and so forth. So like that that is that and a whole lot right, of other right, stuff. Like too. that one thing right by itself was literally my last book. Right. And you can get that uh, by going to tinyurl.com forward slash L U A publications. Uh, so yeah, definitely recommend uh, you do that. It'll definitely benefit your uh, pursuit of uh, you know building second realms. So Number four, there are some physical and digital autonomous zones out there right now. Join them and help develop your uh, develop their capabilities. If you don't know of any to join, network with others and form your own. Keep in mind, however, whatever reputation you create for yourself is what you'll be judged by. Number five, start saving up so you can invest into the second realm when opportunities come up. Encourage others to invest and produce within the second realm by patronizing their businesses. Number six, build a position of digital currency so you can partake in covert commerce, i.e. agorism. Uh, now, I will stop there for a moment. Uh, obviously, agorism would be one example of that, or ethical enclaves in the Venuan, uh, I guess, uh, in the Venuan, uh, the Venuan notion. But, uh, and actually, what predated agorism. But anyways, I think this could also be interpreted as a uh, proxy merchant as well. Um, cause we, we just copy that and added, added one example being agorism. So I think this also could be, a, this also could be a, a proxy merchant who builds up a position of digital currencies so they can be the facilitator between first realm currency and second realm currency. Um, uh, but, uh, not a hundred percent sure, but, uh, I think that's just a great one in and of itself. Yes. I, I think there's a lot to kind of, uh, consider on the, on that one where like, how do you even go about trading? is is something that kind of needs to be considered when when you're building the second realm as we've mentioned in previous episodes of this series number seven if you're an artist writer musician fashion designer or whatever run wild in creating our new culture uh now that one is uh we just took that straight from the uh the first one uh i love that one i, I definitely love that one and it's already spontaneously happening just look at freedom festivals and uh you know it's a lot different than what you'd see in the survival society the american flag t-shirts and uh, you know, well, they're violating the title for flag code, by the way. You can read <laughs> it. Um, it was a trilogy, but, uh, right? It was a trilogy on the violating yes, flag code. It was a flag trilogy. And, you know, yeah. for one, not the only, but for one uh, potential way on how to get started with, with culture jamming, et cetera, um, but otherwise, like helping to build the second realm, uh, please read my article, A Primer on Simon Gestering. Uh, because that, that's, yes. that's, that can, I mean, there's no reason Simon can't be, uh, recruited to advocate for the second, building the second realm. Right. Uh, in fact, I think it would really would be up Simon's, uh, <laughs> alley. So yes, a primer, a oh, primer yeah. on Simon gesturing, read it. Yes, definitely do. Definitely do. Uh, so number eight, begin with defining your boundaries, shun people who actively attack liberty and deny autonomy to others. Number nine, assist your friendly neighborhood proxy merchants whenever possible, as they are your secure gateway to the first realm. Now, this is a new one that we added, Kyle. We had we had eight. So we had their list down to eight and we wanted to make it a, an even top 10. So uh, this was your recommendation. I think it's uh, I like it. I like it because, yeah, the, the, the proxy merchants, uh, as it says here, they're your secure gateway to the first realm. They make it so you don't have to specialize in that, <laughs> so you can focus on other things and uh, not have to uh, deal with the coercion of the first realm. So I think that's a really good one that you recommended there. Well, thank you. And if there were to be a an addendum to the second realm book on strategy, that is almost kind of a, I don't know, in some ways, I don't want to say filler. That's not what I mean. But like emphasizing some things that were mentioned in the original book, but maybe were underemphasized and maybe needed some either clarification or even just expositing on it or whatever, uh, further details and so forth, fleshing it out more. I think one of those things that would need to be fleshed out is the 
unique importance of the proxy merchants because Huge, if yeah. they if they're going to be basically the go between then that needs to really be kind of taken consideration like okay let me just say something really obvious maybe the proxy merchants shouldn't be potheads not because they couldn't be responsible with smoking cannabis but more in the context of you know, just to keep them, you know, keep them, you know, nice, squeaky clean. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Because if they get, you know, if they get harassed or whatever, that the, it's not just they themselves individually who would be at risk. Cause, because I mean, that could be like, it's their entire, it's in, it's their entire clientele. Yeah. Yeah. And even if they follow good security culture, even if they practice secured record archival, which is part of security culture. Um, I mean, worst case scenario, you know, worst case scenario, if they either make a mistake or even worse, even if they did everything right, but the state, the blood still figure out a way how to break something or even like even some of the records, but not all of them or whatever, um, that could actually put so quite other a few people at risk. It would yeah. put other people at risk who trusted the proxy merchants. So I think I think there's a lot of other things kind of going on there. Uh, on the more security culture kind of end of things regarding the proxy merchant, I would also say uniquely, um, in some ways, I think the, for lack of a better term, the psychological aspects of which individuals would be better suited to be a proxy merchant are rather Good interesting. Point. Because remember, they have to interface with the first realm, but they're also proxy merchants with but you know their role, their their chosen profession, if you will, is that they are proxy merchants for the second realm. So there's an interesting question I'm kind of hinting at here, which I'll say explicitly now: How do you be and remain, not just become, but remain a proxy merchant without you know devolving into a controlled schizophrenic? Yeah, the city psychological pressures, or just the pressures of the servile society in general. Yeah, uh, I think that would. Uh... Yeah, that would that that, that kind of creates some difficulties, right? Um, I think there's yeah. ways. I think I think there's ways of mitigating it, which I think would be more appropriate, maybe for our conclusionary episode for this series. But um, I think that's a question that needs to be raised now instead of later, because I don't think it's necessarily wise for just anybody who's interested in building the second realm to just willy nilly just volunteer. Uh, to just like go be go be a proxy merchant or whatever. I I don't think that's it's not even so much. Um, I don't think it's prudent. I think is the word I'm looking for here. I don't think it's prudent at all. Um, you know, even if somebody means well, if they can't stand up to that kind of pressure, and just and not even just the pressure. It's it's more just the the sheer weirdness of going back and forth between the two, and basically in a sense, protecting the one from the other by pretending to be in the one is, is, is going to require some, is going to require some individuals with some very uniquely, uh, special, uh, characteristics that might be, especially more if in regards to covert commerce or built building position of digital currencies, uh, and I'm going to say this, and I might I might remove it later on, just since it's going out to the public. But it's it's especially a concern when the proxy merchants for digital currencies are also violating money transmitter laws. Um, yeah. So yeah. that puts that makes things very very interesting, uh, and and trying to figure out how to deal with that because um, I I don't have an answer right now. Well, uh, I think I, just don't. I think I think the only way to get around that that potential uh, thing that you mentioned is maybe have another go between somebody who's not a uh, proxy merchant. I think there was the term what was it OTC exchangers or whatever it was, um, or or maybe even some other completely different role that hasn't been invented yet that would be part of the second realm that could try that could probably be used to kind of mitigate the risk again division of labor different people along the supply chain doing different things. Yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, move forward here. So number 10, our final one, support your local Avenging Angels. Worst case scenario, if a temporary autonomous zone was breached by the Bludge, police, then the Angels would have to be activated in order to recondition the state to refrain from disrupting our peaceful zones. So for this one, uh, if you hadn't heard our discussion, our, our two-part discussion on anarchist vigilantes, or anarchist vigilantes 
uh, assassination politics and avenging angels, this may be a new concept, or if you haven't listened to the Fawny podcast, but uh, avenging angels, uh, go back, I'll put links to, I'll put links in the show notes to those episodes, but essentially it's, a, it's it was an idea presented by Rayo, uh, the guy who largely developed the, the concept of Vanu. Avenging angels are essentially if, uh, if one of our people is, uh, you know, taken by the state, then he'll have a fun set aside, uh, with someone that he trusts very, very, you know, strongly. And, uh, that person will, uh, you know, harass the state in, in whatever, whatever way he finds, uh, you know, unique and, and safe for him. Um, and he'll, you know, leave little subtle hints, sometimes subtle, sometimes, you know, uh, blatant. Uh, maybe he'll buy a billboard, uh, who knows, uh, to, 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 to draw issue and, and, and make it a, a real burden for the state, uh, to, to have this guy in custody. Um, now that could be, you know, just minor things. Like I said, uh, you know, you know, maybe he gets a, a billboard, uh, or maybe he, you know, turns off all the lights at the police station or something like that, uh, somehow. I mean, there, there are a lot of, a lot of ways to, as you say, Kyle, skin, there's a, there's a more than one way to skin a cat here. Uh, but the idea is to, uh, you know, when they, when they get one of our guys, uh, there's, there's always backlash against the state in some way, whether it's minor, comical, or just, uh, you know, uh, embarrassing, whatever it may be. And, uh, the state realizes that it's not worth screwing with us. And uh, it's, uh, it's Pavlovian psychology uh, at work uh, and uh, in pursuance of personal freedom. So it's, a, it's, it's an interesting one for sure. But uh, this was this is one that you also added, Kyle. So I guess yeah, you want to talk a little bit about this? Yeah, sure. I mean, the goal of the Avenging Angels is basically to get the political prisoner freed or and the, and the harassment, the operations, I should say. Because, I mean, that's how the military calls it. Oh, it's never harassment or murdering. It's just operations. Fine. I'll use the lingo. I'll use military lingo. Why not? I mean, everything's infosec anyway in terms of privacy, right? Oh, it's privacy. No, it's infosec. Well, oh, whatever. It's the same damn thing. Anywho. Um, yeah. So in terms of operations for, you know, the operational goal for Avenging Angels is to basically either ensure the freedom, the release of the political prisoners, or uh, basically continue operations until the fund, the aforementioned fund, is exhausted. That's it. So basically you just use that fund until the political prisoner is released, or you keep going and going until the fund is exhausted, and therefore you can't do anything more because there's nothing else to fund the operation <laughs> with. Right. That's it. I mean, that's it. I mean, it's just bottom line. I mean, either either the use of the money will be used to get him released or the use of the money will just be used for operations and the pro political prisoner will not be released. But at least the avenging angel tried because you can't win them all. Um, that's kind of the whole point is to basically kind of take uh, take a stick and, you know, basically uh, or actually probably better analogy is uh, take a rolled up newspaper and, you know, smite it on the state's nose like it's an errant <laughs> dog. Right. Like, no, don't pee on the carpet. That's that's the Pavlovian psychology or the applied Pavlovian psychology. No, do not pee on the carpet, government. You shall not pee on the carpet. It's my carpet. Don't pee on my friend's carpet, I, or probably more accurately for the Avenging Angel. No, government, you are not allowed to pee on my friend's carpet. And I will keep smiting you on your damn nose until you stop peeing on my friend's carpet. I mean that I mean that's it. It's not it's not and see it's also a difference of attitude as well. It's not big government with uh that that is the uh the monster that cannot be defeated. No. It's an errant dog that pees on <laughs> carpets. It's it's dumb, it's stupid and yes, violent and will bite you. Yes, I'm not ignoring that. But it's not I have described the state as Leviathan, and I still stick by that, but I think, unfortunately, there's a context I think some people may have taken from previous podcasts or articles of mine where they kind of make this inference, this, this, in this, they, they kind of get this implied meaning that I never intended, where the, where when I call the state like Leviathan or whatever, like it's, it, like it's this untouchable thing that we can't ever defeat or whatever. Um, I only describe it as Leviathan to, to kind of give the idea that it's basically a monster because that was the original meaning of the word Leviathan. That is not to say the monster can't be defeated or at the very least uh, mitigated avoided. or, uh, shall we say, avoided, which is more like where Vanu's coming from. Or agorism is coming at it more like out-competing like the monster and so forth. Um and and then of course the avenging angels is more just taking a rolled up newspaper and just smiting <laughs> the the monster on its nose. Uh, the vigilantes would be more like 
the the vigilantes and or you know uh, the jackals and or you know the guys in the assassination markets would be more like the equivalent of taking a ha- uh, like a hacksaw or a machete and just amputating certain parts of the monster off. Um, that I mean, I'm kind of I'm kind of metaphorically trying to describe different people's functions and, and different things and all that. The avenging angels are kind of it's almost a lot more like vigilantism light. You know, it's kind of almost like vigilantism mixed with a little bit of culture jamming or kind of, I don't know, it's kind of more vague in some sense. But the idea is Pavlovian psychology, smiting the state on the nose. No, government, you shall not pee on my friend's carpet. How dare you? Wrong. Don't do that. Right. right. So that concludes the list and uh, just uh, uh, parting thoughts here. Quote, this is not an exhaustive list for how to start building the second realm. It is merely a beginning point. Develop your own methods in accordance with the philosophical intent of the second realm and work with others to facilitate efficacious methods of trade outside the first realm in quote. So yeah, alternative economies. Yeah, that's uh, that's an important first step uh, for uh, or not maybe not a first step, but that's an important step for a second realm or a Vani mini culture association, an intentional community, or something along those lines. Um, that's uh, a, that's a huge that's a huge goal. Yes, yes, it is. I mean, and the idea you see, I think I think one problem I've noticed, and this has kind of come up over the years, and I'll just mention it here just to kind of bring everybody up to speed who may not yet be aware of this. Um, whenever different authors have made suggestions about how to fix certain things, and even what I've suggested on things I write about, about how to potentially get the ball rolling on on fixing certain things or whatever, Inevitably, there will always be some sort of critic who will more or less say something along the lines of um, basically accusing me of central planning, which is hilarious because remember Sam Konkin in the New Libertarian Manifesto mentioned about different strategists and tacticians would offer their proposed strategies and tactics, etc., uh, basically on, on the market and people will buy and sell strategies and tactics like commodities, right? Um, that's part of agorism too, by the way. Uh, and technically, in a manner of speaking, that's all I'm doing. Except the one difference is I'm doing a gratis, um, in, in, in at least at least for the most part. So it's kind of hilarious that in the attempt to kind of emulate what Sam Conkin himself promoted, which is not a thing of charity as he described it, that I get accused and people similar to me have gotten accused of basically of of, of base <laughs> the criticism being you're a wannabe central planner. Um, that's kind of fascinating. I got that. I got that once uh, from uh, when when I posted the Freedom Umbrella of Direct Action into a Libertarian Party group. So yeah, I know what you mean. But let's let me let me kind of mention a little bit about the psychology of, uh, here a little bit. So, but what these critics of various kinds, just over the years, just different people. Um, generally speaking, here's a good question: How have these critics largely themselves been advocates of direct action of any kind, or have they been political crusaders? I know the answer to that question. Shane, yep. would you like to take a poke at what the answer is? is? Oh, I know it, yeah. You know I know it. <laughs> yeah, so just for the benefit of the listeners, the answer is um, the the folks who basically criticize me of being, basically being a wannabe central planner are 100% without a single exception uh, political crusaders. So not only are we not on the same wavelengths at all, I mean – I mean, Rayo would talk about bad vibes, right? I would say something similar to her too, bad vibes. Um, there are so many bad vibes coming here because even our approach is just how to solve – even if we agree on like X, Y, and Z are problems in the world or, 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 or things the state is doing or whatever, the approaches to even begin dealing with it are automatically like on completely different wavelengths and so therefore bad vibes. Uh, to yeah. complete the analogy a little bit. So that that that's kind of the problem. So I get accused of being a wannabe central planner or whatever, and it's like, okay, but here's the thing. That's coming from people who themselves are directly advocating and promoting and pushing for solely basically some version of central planning when they politically crusade for fill in the blank whatever the hell. Whether it be a specific politician, whether it be a specific piece of legislation, whether it be a political party platform like the anti-libertarian libertarian party or goddammit anything else I can't think of right offhand. See, and that's that's the controlled schizophrenia at play here. That is includes but is not limited to the political crusaders. They will accuse you of what they themselves do. 
projection it is absolutely projection from start to finish and i for one am frankly sick of it i mean i'm do i am not just i'm not trying i am doing what konkin himself said to do because it was a good idea um and and i basically get a lot of flack for it and i'm not the only one who gets a lot of flack for it either and it's rather fascinating that the political crusaders if I had to speculate and conj- – I really try hard, ladies and gentlemen, not to speculate or conjecture about much of anything publicly. Every once in a while, I will. This would be one of those times. If I had <laughs> to speculate and conjecture, Shane, I honestly think the political crusaders, some of them, not all, I think some of them are actually rather jealous of people like me because they – even if they're not fully conscious of it. I think they can kind of at least intuitively understand that basically it's not so much that people like me are the future. That's part of it. The other part of it is that even just in the present, what did how what was Charlie Sheen's infamous phrase that people made fun of him for that actually I honestly do like winning. Did you say 9/11 was a false flag or something? Well, there was that too, but I'm (laughs) that's more the conspiracy the the conspiracizing part of it. No, it was his winning winning when he was hopped up on drugs or whatever, whatever he was accused of. And it doesn't matter whether he was or not. The point was when he was mentioning that phrase where he got a lot of flack for, damn it, I loved him for doing that. I'm sorry, I actually do like Charlie Sheen. Shoot me. I also like Kevin Spacey, who, interestingly enough, is getting a lot of flack for some weird shit that he already apologized for, but his, his career is going down the toilet, which also means that my favorite TV show, which is about <laughs> political maneuvering. Yeah, and thing, and now how- that's out now, isn't it? Well, House of Cards. Of House well, of Cards. House of Cards might be canceled over this. I mean, that's crap oh, because shit. House of Cards is very much a morality play about the evils of politics. Or if you want to phrase it a slightly different evils way, of the first realm. Right. Or if you want to phrase it a slightly different way, um, is there more to politics than pure spectacle? Which is the real central driving question, I think, of 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 House of Cards. And I'm not the only one who said that, by the way. But yeah, well, Paul, Paul Rosenberg actually has a different. Uh, um, he put he had this in one of the uh, one of the essays I was included in Lodging of Wayfaring Men. But he defined politics as as the art and science of managing centralized control. Um, yes. So yeah, yes. yeah, I I I I love that that explanation. It's just so quick, concise, and to the point. It is, and that's a, I I like that too. I like that too. And see, the political crusaders are jealous of people like me. Because I'm not playing the game. I'm not using status means to achieve libertarian ends, as Konkin put it. I'm not doing that. I'm actually at least – maybe not 100 percent of the time, but I'm at least partially doing the consistency of using libertarian means to achieve libertarian ends. And it's rather quite fitting that I conjecture uh, that they are very jealous – of me, of both me specifically, but also more importantly, of people like me, people that aren't even alive yet, who will basically do the direct act from the get go and won't waste yeah, their time. These, these are these are the Venuans, the Van Nomads, the Agoras, the minimal sailboaters, the uh, perpetual travelers, the all these folks. Yeah, yeah, even 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 your run of the don't take this the wrong way, Shane, but even the run of the mill voluntarist is like. Like, my God, if people started from that position where it's more of a firm anti-voting, you know, propertarian position, my God, we can avoid a lot of – we can we can lower opportunity costs like nobody's business. We, we barely have to say anything about political crusading other than don't right. do it. Right. Yeah, and just if you, even if you start off from – And it sucks that political, political, political crusading even has to be mentioned in anarchist circles, but – um, yeah, I guess that's just but they're the not even, the world we live but in. But they're not even – well, yeah, but they're being inconsistent, right, with their anarchist politics For sure, or whatever. Yeah. And so they're not even starting from even the bare bones, basic, kind of hard to fuck up unless you really try hard at it, which is what the political crusaders are good at. Uh, the kind of really hard to fuck up, just bare bones, basic voluntarism, which is actually in many ways – Pretty much not completely dissimilar from black flag anarchism or the individualist anarchism specifically where it's kind of like we're not necessarily saying you should do anything. What we're saying is refrain from doing certain things like voting, for instance. And and it's it's kind of like, guys, if you have that much hard of a time to refrain from doing things that legit that genuinely make the world a worse place to live in, then you have no business complaining about the forms of direct action 
that I or others do where we're trying to make the world a better place or at least make our or at bare minimum doing lifestyle changes that make our own individual lives better. It's kind of like it's kind of like the old biblical idea of get the moat out of your own eye before you start pointing the fucking finger. Right, and an empty an empty cup can't fill another. So you know, yeah, if, if, if you're not if you're not free, it's kind of hard to you know. Um, I mean, there, there's there's limitations, right? If you aren't free, it's you you can only do so much. You know, there there needs to be self liberational media. Exactly, and and kind of like you mentioned a little bit ago about that one time you posted a link to the Freedom Umbrella of Direct Action, the FUDA, and you got a lot of flack for it. You know, similarly, anytime I've mentioned forms of direct action, not all the time, but it'll come up every once in a while. It's like, oh yeah, you're a wannabe central planner. It's like, no, dude, you are. You you yourself. And by the way, this isn't an ad. These aren't ad hominems, right? Because the gloves have already come off. They They've already accused me of stuff that I wouldn't do in a million years. Um, and so I'm just kind of counter accusing them. But I but unlike their accusation where there's no proof, I can actually prove it because it's like, oh, you're John Doe. You're such and such in the, of the Libertarian Party. Oh, now we automatically have a problem because of your organizational affiliation. You know, it's kind of it's kind of like. It's it, this would be kind of the equivalent of like a certain civil, a so-called civil rights organization accusing somebody of being prejudiced in some way when they themselves are actually being prejudiced because of their organizational affiliation. You know, it's it's kind of you know, and and that's why I, this is why I don't like mainstream politics is because if the anti-libertarian libertarian party arcs were actually like successful in what they could do where they can somehow infiltrate the state and turn it against itself you know what i will agree with a certain canadian philosopher who shall be unnamed because he actually used to be pretty okay back in the day um yeah you cannot infiltrate the kkk and turn into the naacp you cannot infiltrate the pro latino uh group and turn into the anti-latino group and you cannot turn government into some sort of benevolent organization that makes our lives better because at that point you really because if honestly if that's where people are coming from they genuinely either don't want to or maybe perhaps they actually genuinely don't understand or conceive of what Rothbard himself called the by the same title the anatomy of the state people really just don't understand government they just hear a lot of stuff about oh something something road something something defense something something uh whatever i mean and as a side note my colleagues at the at corporate office, they do not like free speech because they are very politically correct. And – oh, I even mentioned Brandon. They have to be to avoid lawsuits. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I'm saying even the other L3s like myself. I'm not talking about this. I'm not talking about – Oh, OK. I'm, fair enough. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not talking mean, about yeah. management of the L5s or L7s. I'm not talking about any of those people. I'm talking about people my level, literally, in, in, in the company. And they're very politically correct. And I was just like, well, something, 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 Brandenburg v. Ohio. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, last time I checked, still law, and it's been overturned. Feel free to look it up. But yeah, pretty much you can even advocate for revolution. And that's free speech. Only limitation is you can't incite and you can't threaten anyone specifically. But you can totally advocate for revolution. Shoot the bludgies dead. Being... Or, or or the bloodless coup, if you want to do it that way, where you're plotting and planning and scheming, you get to, do, get to do a coup. Then some asshole made some comment, like what Trump did. <laughs> it's like, Jesus, I wish he did, almost. Not that I particularly like the guy, obviously. I obviously refer to our political uh, refer to our TVP episode on political crusading, where I said some very specific things about his wannabe majesty, the shiny rug. Uh, but, you know, Jesus, I mean, I don't know, maybe an actual real coup. Oh, and by the way, there was that book report I did on, coup, on uh, like the practical, what was it called? The practical handbook on coup d'etats or whatever. I actually understand how coup d'etats work because actual people who have like studied it and written about it and in some cases done it went public about it. And yeah, so there are you, basically the short versions you need the military to make a coup work. Trump did not use the military. Therefore, it is not a coup. That's the simple model. <laughs> and I said that at work and nobody believed me because they don't study military science like I do. <laughs> they don't actually understand the destructive potential. Hold up. So you're, so you're saying your, your, your colleagues don't study war and such? 
They don't? No, apparently. And apparently they were OK with the military when uh, when Obama was around, but they weren't OK with the military when Bush was or Bush Jr. was around. <laughs> and now they're back to not being OK with them. You know, it's like the old joke about welcome back. The anti-war left. Where were you guys for the past fucking eight years? Oh, that's right. You're a bunch of disingenuous, hypocritical, controlled, schizophrenic political crusaders. Oh, sorry. My bad. I kind of assume you people had integrity of some kind, even though you're a bunch of disgusting socialists who apparently became fascists. <laughs> now you're back to being socialist, but you were still a little bit socialist before. You're just authoritarian. Can we just settle on one word? Kind of covers it all. Authoritarian. You're statists. Uh, then that's the only real prejudice in the world, by the way. I'm sorry, I don't mean to rant so much this time, but th I'll end on this one, this rant on this one. There's only one real form of prejudice that actually counts in the world, and it's not racism, it's not sexism, and it's not even transphobia. You know what it's called? It's called statism because it harms everybody and anybody. You know, statism really is colorblind in the kind of total genocidal sense of the term because now anybody can oppress anybody and it's okay because I have a badge. It's okay because I have a mandate from the voters. It's okay because it's the law. It's okay because it's for the common good, and of course my personal favorite excuse for democracy and authoritarianism, which is the same thing. I'm just following orders, which is pretty much the one single phrase that is the complete and total abdication of any personal responsibility for fucking anything. And it's not just limited to the military because they're the ones that are famous for using it. And that's that's it. I mean, I don't know what else to say beyond that. It's just statism is the worst form of prejudice on this fucking planet, at least at this time and place. And any other form of prejudice, as bad as it very well may be, really pales in comparison to statism every single time. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I like but it. You will never hear, statism, but, but you will never hear the social justice warriors who claim to be worried about prejudice and bigotry of various kinds. They will never say one fucking word about statism and the democide and the murders of millions of people last century that accompanied it, never mind the evils of central banking and the impoverishment of the American people since 1913, or anybody else for that matter. Oh, they won't talk about that kind of statism at all, because, geez, I guess we can all live in dumpsters at that point. End rant. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. It's always good to chat with you, Kyle. Always a good time. Never boring, right? Never boring. That's uh, a good way to put it, yeah. It's a great way to put it. Oh, so, so, so I guess some 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 discussion on the first realm, which I I, I appreciated. I appreciated the philosophy, uh, very much in line with the with the uh, with the I, with the philosophy of the second realm. So uh, so very good there. I guess uh, I don't really have much else to say. I mean, we just uh, updated the previous um, or updated the uh, next steps portion of the book, and I think it's a lot better now. I uh, you know we we. Combined it, made it less redundant, and there's uh, there's really no vagueness in uh, in the list. And I said that was the thing that most bothered me was the vagueness. So I think we did a good job. But I, we have kind of a best interest best interest in it though, right? So. <laughs> well, yeah, and and people who are who are serious about trying, and I know I've been mentioning a lot this episode just because I've been hearing a lot about it at work, and it's just it's getting under my skin because like I actually have a rough idea and a better set of ideas. Pick any one of them. Um, it's, it's supposed to be a free market in, in direct action, of course, uh, of doing things that don't involve, uh, you know, uh, basically virtue signaling, um, because that's, that's kind of like a bad thing. You know, I'm not a bad person for making judgments about what I think is good versus bad. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like there are, there are absolutes in the world. There is black and white. You know, one of my favorite questions is, oh, how pregnant are you? Because it's interesting because there are there can be to be fair, there are shades of gray with things like if you're talking to a pregnant woman, she might be in her first trimester. She might be seven weeks later. She might or the kid's about to pop. I mean, I don't I mean, there that is a shades of gray to be perfectly fair. However, that is separate from the question of like, are you pregnant or not? Because depending on whether you want a kid or not, <laughs> doesn't matter whichever way it goes. But the question is very important to get it right the first time, isn't it? 
regardless of whether you want the kid or not. It's very important. And that is not a shade of gray. That is very black and white. Is she pregnant or is she not? Hmm. We better get a firm answer on that sooner rather than later. Right, kids? Uh, because well, depending whether there's going to be one, right? Uh, or even if you want one or, or not, you know. So, yeah, there is black and white. You know, it's kind of like, hey, did the sun rise this morning? Because if not, we might all be dead soon. Carlson knows this planet's spinning off its axis or whatever. So far, everything seems to be OK. That seems to be a black and white. You know, oh, are we floating through space and like floating off into the ether? Oh, wait, gravity's still around. That seems to be a black and white. I'm not saying a lot of things of the human experience are necessarily black and white, but I'm saying there are certainties and there are absolutes. How about this one? Mortality, death, things die. Things are also born, too. <laughs> I guess we could make a joke about cycle of life here vis-a-vis uh, -vis Lion King or whatever, but um, I would just simply say that that death and mortality, those that that's an absolute. That is not your fucking opinion. That is a reality. Um, and I guess maybe with some things we can kind of maybe to some degree kind of debate or, or try to rationally discover whether certain things are absolutes or whether it's issues of preference and therefore shades of gray or whatever, you know, market, you know, market demands or whatever. But I don't know, man, I just, I, I, I hear a lot of weird shit in the office, especially this past week. And it's like, like, if you guys are serious about trying to fix certain things in the world, there are things you can do that don't require like grandstanding that don't require, I mean, there were even people in the office saying how wonderful those stupid idiot Parkland kids are with their gun control shit. And it's like, yeah. Now, I, oh, and by the way, I even said at the office, by the way, have you guys never heard of 3D printing? And you can like 3D printed guns, right? You know that, right? In fact, actually, fun thing, Claire Wolf, my favorite, still my favorite author. She actually had upon her blog recently, Living Freedom, or I think that's what it's called, um, a link to a video where basically somebody was testing and showing the footage of 3D printed bullets and testing it through some sort of Glock. And so it's kind of like, oh, and this is this is post Parkland, by the way, I think was uh, considering the, the video upload date of whatever it was. So it's like, OK, so whether we're talking like the Cody Wilson stuff from years ago, like the Liberator pistol and some other things that Defense Distributed did, or we're talking about 3D printed bullets post Parkland, you know, I, I, I remember that one kid when he was on with Don Lemon on CNN and, and he was like saying, but change. Change will come, and he was very serious. Like change will come. Total political crusader, but and, and not only a political crusader, not only a political crusader. Like he's a straight up statist one. I mean, there's like the old, the famous T-shirt. You know, tyrants agree, gun control works, and it had pictures of Stalin and uh, Pol Pot and somebody else on it. Um, and it's like, yeah, I mean, I mean, basically these are a bunch of authoritarian national socialists. And uh, and they're portraying themselves as, oh, we just want our democracy to work because we want to outlaw bump stocks or whatever. And by the way, Shane, as a side note, I honestly did. I haven't kept up with a lot of gun stuff up until recently. Now I'm getting back into it. I honestly did not know what a bump stock was until these disgusting wannabe lobbyists, because that's what those children are. I wouldn't even call them teenagers because teenagers, teenagers, teenagers at least try to have some dangerous fun. Which I can respect because I still do that. <laughs> but these children pretending to be teenagers or by default because of their age um, are all that safety. We need safety. We need that safety in our schools. We can't have any dangerous fun. You're not allowed to have guns. And I mean it's so puritanical. I mean Jesus, if they can't even do that, I mean I guess nothing's much happening in the bedroom because aren't these kids supposed to be having sex with each other and having unplanned pregnancies and teenage pregnancies and all that? Well, shit, I mean that's a form of dangerous fun too, not recommending it, but I'm simply saying, I mean Jesus, if they're all about safety, 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 I mean Jesus, I mean I guess next thing you're going to do is say that, oh, well, you don't need condoms, just wear it, just have the purity ring. I mean at that point, if we're going to get all puritanical about it, I mean might as well get rid of guns, get rid of condoms, get rid of stuff the free market produces. You know, and that's and that's not and that's not even a left versus sorry, I know I'm going on a second rant here, but that's not even a left versus right thing anymore because allegedly the right wingers all want their guns and the left wingers want all their condoms and so forth. And it's like, Jesus Christ, the free market produces both. 
if you didn't have a free market, I mean, can you imagine con- like like not even communists necessarily, but even kind of your softy, you know, Scandinavian socialists, you know, ja- and 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 regulatory bureaucracies, where it's like, well, I mean, good luck having. I mean, if you can't have a selection of guns, I mean, and and they can, and they're trying to essentially produce or otherwise tighten controls on guns. I mean, they might as well do the same thing with condoms. I mean, why not? I mean, I mean, I mean, these things are, you know, <laughs> these things are just, they're so dangerous. I mean, here, okay, folks, here's where I'm trying to get. At. I know I'm kind of getting excited. Maybe I shouldn't have drunk coffee right before, right before doing this episode. Let me put it to, here, here's a fun thought experiment. Every single gun control argument you've ever heard, replace the word gun, guns, firearm, etc., with condoms. And see if you don't freaking bust a gut with the ridiculousness of it. You know, so many lives lost due to gun, you know, yeah, we, we, you know, condom violence, you know, gun violence, condom violence. I don't know. I mean, it's just, look, f- the free market produces things. People make things. They sell services too. And a firearm is kind of like a condom. The free market produces these things. They also produce wireless routers and cars and airplanes, trains and whatever else. Um, and and so demonizing a particular thing made by the free market doesn't make sense. And also kind of blaming the NRA for everything. Well, geez, at that rate, um, I guess we could blame all sorts of um, all sorts of organizations that uh, that pretty much are trying to, you know, make sure that, um, you know, people aren't spreading STDs and such. Um, and, and whatever. So it's, it's kind of like, I don't know, man, it's just, I think, I honestly do think that people promoting the whole gun violence narrative and really pushing for what actually is truly victim disarmament. I really think they are delusional in the sense that they're not thinking about technology and direct action in the sense of like 3d printed firearms, but they're also kind of showing just how out of touch they are with like life. They're so puritanical, they don't want anybody to have any dangerous fun, even if it's in the context of, like, going out in the middle of a field and plinking. I mean, do they even know what plinking is? I do. Anybody who's used a firearm pretty much knows what plinking is. Not exactly the most fun thing to do. FTXs are a lot more fun. But, um, and that's, and never mind, like, hunting or, or even, or things of more utilitarian nature like that, where you're trying to, you know, for your food or whatever, uh, for certain people, especially if they're hard up. And so it's it's just, it's just... And like I was – sorry, and sorry, before I got sidetracked, that was the other thing too. I didn't even know what a bump stock was, and now they want to – and now these Parkland kids want to ban bump stocks, and it's like, wait a minute. I need to know what a bump stock is, and then I watch videos. I'm like, dude, this is like one of the smartest workarounds ever. Like I can't believe – I mean shit, we need to start 3D printing bump stocks if they haven't done it already. I mean damn. I mean add that to the list. I mean – yeah, and that was the other thing too. It's kind of like we want to ban bump stocks. It's like – even if you got bump stocks banned at the state or federal governments, um, 3D printed bump stocks, I think that there would be a market demand for that because you kids don't understand economics and you sure as hell don't understand technology like at all apparently. And you know, and that's kind of an ironic note too because remember millennials keep getting accused and um, and this would technically be Generation Z allegedly who's promoting the gun control shit. Um, that allegedly millennials and their children like are like tech savvy or whatever. Well, apparently the Parkland kids ain't too tech savvy. Otherwise, they wouldn't be fucking advocates for gun control because they would already understand 3D printing. Like I'm like, dude, I'm like 31 and I get this. Like what's, what's, <laughs> right. what's the excuse here? Um, there isn't one. They're basically they're basically public, and this is the result of public of public schooling, right? This isn't necessarily a mental health issue. This isn't necessarily even a gun control issue, or 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 or, or other things that are kind of commonly associated with these so-called mass shootings. What this really is a result is is public schooling. It's it's the government indoctrination centers because you don't. I mean, hell, there's even been articles and other stuff coming out where that were different. Um, they're now being called whistleblowers, which I think is interesting for other reasons. Uh, whistleblowers, basically certain kids are coming across saying that if they didn't go along with the whole March for our lives propaganda, that they would have been formally disciplined. I mean, this is such a fucking racket. It is amazing. Not that I'm completely surprised, but the fact that they, that the mainstream media, the corporate horror media would incentivize and pressure along with the school uh, uh, officials or whatever, though those bureaucrats that work for the government, to basically pressure these children into grieving publicly 
like on the record and stuff is just so abhorrent. I mean, it's one thing to get like eyewitness reports or whatever, because that's just good journalism. But this is not that, especially that crappy CNN town hall thing where um, the NRA lady whose name I don't remember right offhand. She's a conservative, though, unfortunately. Uh, Dana Loesch? Yes. But I really felt for her. Like it was I mean, she just got on all sides. Just I mean, and later when she was on with Sean Hannity on on a follow up thing, because and he's a fascist. Um, she did admit to him that, um, like, like apparently some behind the scenes stuff was that there were people that were concerned for her safety and like, you got to And she had like a three person security detail, like she had bodyguards and shit. And it's just like, okay, so, so the regressive left was basically threatening to fucking murder her, uh, there. And it's kind of like, okay, so where is all this coming from? And it's like, okay, so pressure from the schools, pressure from that. Plus you have the real life, like people grieving type of thing, which, which heightens the emotional atmosphere. And then, you know, then it's all kind of focusing on blame the NRA, blame the NRA, even though technically the NRA historically actually has directed certain forms of gun control, just as Wayne LaPierre. Uh, who's, uh, you know, and, and his shenanigans. That's why there were other gun rights organizations that, yes, were filled with lobbyists, but competitors to the NRA, like GOA and and some others. Um, I mean, me personally, I like the Zelman partisans, but they're bloggers. They're not, they're not actual lobbyists. Um, my point for ranting about this is just simply to point out that when we're talking about the second realm and kind of looking, shall we say, looking a new way forward, um, what we're trying to kind of do is kind of skirt around all this horrible, evil shit that I just described. Because we don't have to do that. We don't have to really worry about political crusading. We don't have to worry about the media's perception of whatever the hell. We don't have to worry about other people's prejudices and hang ups so much. You know, people can still have, and that's the important thing too. People can now still have prejudice and hangups and bigotry, even in the second realm. But it can be handled a lot better through market forces. Look, consider this: if you have somebody who is an actual, I'm not people, somebody being accused of. I'm saying somebody who really is a racist, somebody who really just doesn't like people who doesn't have his own skin color. I don't care where what skin color he's starting from. If you have somebody who's an actual bona fide racist, like a real one, like Abraham Lincoln, for example, uh, who was a white supremacist. That's on record, by the way, but people don't like to talk about it. Um, what you kind of find is that when subject to market forces, that particular form of bigotry actually hurts the bottom line. So for instance, if you have somebody who won't sell product or service to certain people that he is prejudiced against, he loses out on that business. He becomes, well, poor. It's an opportunity cost that he has now voluntarily incurred upon himself. That's the economics of how it works. So therefore, the market actually over time, long term, actually encourages – I wouldn't say multiculturalism, but it definitely discourages that kind of blind bigotry. Because it's just you're just losing out on business at that point. I'm not saying we it should all be a soft, cuddly, uh, you know, let's sing, dance around a tree, sing kumbaya type of thing. But it does mean you can't treat people like crap when they just want to do business. So that's that's kind of the benefit of the second realm. It's using market forces to basically uh, forge a new way forward, so to speak. At the same time, though, the second realm has to protect itself against has protected itself against the first realm and you know the, those SWAT teams will do their best to try to sh shut down anybody that I mean even if it's bad intel from like an informant who's just trying to like cut off time off his prison sentence or whatever uh that's hanging over like a suspended sentence or, or like shave off time off a suspended sentence over his head or something um whether they're acting on good information bad information or they're just you know bored uh, the SWAT teams will try uh, inevitably at some point to basically try and raid uh, some of the temporary autonomous zones or whatever. Therefore, that's why the good security procedures are good, and that's why we practice security culture and, and that kind of thing is to kind of uh, mitigate the risks of that kind of thing. And even when something does come down the pike, well, that's why we have Avenging Angels. Um, and so, yes, there is a reason for why this redux of the list – of the next steps list for building the second realm is as it is, is because I think there was, and I'm sorry, Shane, this was kind of a long winded way of kind of trying to explain it, but I think there were some gaps that were missing from the original authors. 
I think they start off with a good idea. And like I said earlier, just to reiterate, it was like a good draft. It was or a, it was a draft version. I could see the kernel of where they were coming from, but it was just it wasn't it, it shouldn't have been published. And hopefully with this redux, uh, I hope that we keep to the same spirit of what they were of that kernel that they were trying to kind of put forth. And so that that's just kind of where it's at. So hopefully this list is actually an actionable one that is also more comprehensive and will help actually. And my hope is actually facilitate the development of the and speed up, more importantly, the the building of the second realm such as it is. Yes, yes, and that was a yeah, great conclusion, great conclusion. Uh, I really don't have anything else, and uh, we're at an hour and 12 minutes, or hour and 21 minutes, rather, and uh, I think we should stop now or we'll go for two hours. What do you think? <laughs> stop before I go on a third run, right? The fourth, the fifth, yeah. The right to defend ourselves against our own government. But any such government, you must understand, is not our government. The government that exists in Washington, D.C. today is not the government defined in the Constitution for the United States of America. It is a treasonous entity set out to destroy the Constitution and bring about a world government. That's why it doesn't matter whether you elect Democrats or Republicans, things always still get worse. And worse, and worse, and worse. The important fact to remember is that the leaders of both the right and the left are a small, hardcore of men who have been and still are illuminous, are members of the Brotherhood. They may have been or may be members of the Christian or Jewish religions, are atheists, are Buddhists. But that is only to further their own ends. Remember, the end justifies the means. They are and always have been Luciferian and internationalist. Today, the Southern Baptist Church is in the total control of the Freemasonic Lodge. They give allegiance to no particular nation, although they have used on occasion nationalism to further their cause. Their only concern is to gain greater economic and political power. The ultimate objective of the leaders of both groups is identical. That is why it doesn't make any difference whether you elect Democrat or Republican. The result has always been the same. And we go closer and closer to one world totalitarian socialist government.